research and evaluation of the relative merits of different types of institutional approaches to different types of issues and make sure that form follows function, that the kind of uh, mechanisms that we design are appropriate and optimized to the particular challenges that they're supposed to be addressing. We have to ensure, I think, really, and this resonates again with Wolfgang, that uh, the users, citizens, and technical communities are very much centrally involved in discussing such things. Because at the end of the day, in the internet era, it, it's clear that, you know, for something to be supported, it has to be, you know, there has to be a sense of ownership and, and real uh, engagement. You cannot, in the context of a technologically empowered global populace that is able to use systems to do different types of things and, and customize them to their own desires, you cannot easily just force upon everybody uh, approaches that are really at, at odds with what they're trying to do and with um, the views of many people around the world. So there has to be a real uh, diverse multi-stakeholder engagement to get support for any kind of multilateral initiatives. And finally, I would say uh, that in particular, I think where we need to focus in the near term is really expanding operational mutual assistance on consumer and network protection issues information sharing on good and best practices, monitoring and early warning, incident response, these kinds of things I think are really priorities, much more so in my view. Ensuring the integrity of networks um, is much more important, I would argue, in the near term and more likely to be a source of cooperation among parties than trying to reach agreement on exactly what kinds of uses of the internet or, or content can tra transverse the internet. I think that would be very, very difficult to achieve. And so it's best to start with low hanging fruit. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Drake. I think you, uh, you mentioned a lot of issues we have to <laughs> dissolve, yeah? As the uh, next speaker, I would like to invite uh, Professor Liu Chuan. I think uh, she, Dr. Liu Chuan is a professor of the Chinese Academy of Science. She is a geographer and expert in the earth science database management. She is a high level advisor of the Global Alliance for ICT and Development, is the United Nations Organization, co-chair of the task group on developing country of the International Committee on Data for Science and Technology. She is a Quad Data Prize winner for two, uh, 2008, is this year. Now she is leading an international team on enhancing access to and application of science data in bridging digital divide. Now, Professor Liu Chuan, you have the floor, please. Thank you, Chairman, uh, and uh, thank you for the introduction. And uh, I am uh, very honored to be here and uh, give some uh, little bit of introduction about the guideline of UN DESA guide ESDDC actions based on the multicultures and the cybersecurity. And the Global Alliance for Enhancing Access to and Application of Scientific Data in Developing Countries, with short name is ESDDC, is the, uh, one of five projects of the community of expertise in the education in UN GATE. Uh, this is decided in the two years ago by the UN DESA. And uh, actually, uh, the, uh, uh, in the Tunis, uh, uh, we since Tunis, and uh, we our uh, leader, one of our leader, uh, Professor Ivada, and uh, gave the Tunis commitment. Uh, said, uh, we all scientific communities in the world, we will work together to focus on the try hard and joint action on the sort of the uh, digital divide, especially for the scientific data. So, and then uh, we, uh, the ESDDC's mission is uh, creating an international cross-boundary
platform and a network for promoting open access to and application of scientific data for innovative research and development in or with or for developing countries. So, and I think this, from this case, so you can understand why we want code norm and we want to think this is good benefit for scientific research and for the society development. The strategy of the for the implementation is we want we are working on building a decentralized network networks. We call we understand in the world we have multi culture, so we are uh, to cooperate in different cultures, different languages. So we that is why we call we building a decentralized network networks, and we enhancing open and access scientific data policy. And they encourage the use data innovatively and the data mining with the creative knowledge. Of course, we are developed, development oriented and the development in a win and win manner. And this is the strategy for this project in, in the implementation. And then we have uh, uh, five action lines. And uh, we build a thick tongue network, data center network, technology transfer and the system network, teaching and the training network, and then showcase application network. And in the showcase application network, we have three priority areas. One is poverty reduction, second is disaster mitigation, and then another one is public health. So and then we have an international team. We have a leader team, then one is from Chinese Academy of Sciences, and the other from the international organization Code Data, and one from Brazil, South Africa, USA, and also have another Chinese organizations for, and including Internet Society of China here. And now we have our collaborators. There are 20, 26 organizations and 20 networks in 17 countries. This means different language, different states, different uh, continent. So we work together. So this is really a big, uh, is, uh, for us, really is a big uh, a team. For example, we uh, have a partner and the collaborators, uh, the network for disaster mitigation. We have a disaster network of Asian countries. There are 10 countries in South Southeast Asia, and the international uh, uh, emergency management uh, society disaster network, international academy panel disaster network, China U.S. cooperation network, disaster training center in the national earth earthquake search and uh, services uh, center and also pilot network of disaster mitigation from enterprises. This is the, for the, the, the this year, last year, this year, and the, for the disaster mitigation. We have very good example in the Wenchuan disaster. So we have a, 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 a gate and a gate byte data from uh, more than 20 countries to send it to Wenchuan either. So and the send to do the, uh, 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 the, the team to, to Wenchuan work on that. So very uh, useful. And then we have methodology to have a joint action with the multiple funding and the multiple cultures. For example, we work with the IAP, Inter International Academy of Panel, on the open data and the knowledge environment. Joint action with the core data and the think tank network and the global database development. And also teams of the disaster mitigation Asia-Pacific Network on the capacity building, UNDESA on the knowledge database management, and also uh, committee, uh, International Committee on Earth Observation System, we want to uh, have focus on the technology transfer and assistance. And the uh, Science Council of Asia on the uh, open data and knowledge environment for poverty reduction and the ecosystem protections. So all these kind of actions we have joined together. So that is the, <clears throat> so with this kind of work, we have a very good comments from the GATA Strategy Council. 
Because this this is this kind of effort is uh, uh, is uh, the, uh, is uh, uh, is good. Give up very good comments. That is right, very, very relatively with the gate mission, and this is, is a successful <coughs> effort. And also, uh, Mr. Mr. Sajju Khan, the uh, Deputy uh, Secretary General of UN, and they give a very good comments and direction for our project. And this is a picture from the uh, the uh, uh, Sajju Khan and the uh, 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 Professor Chris ha, uh, Chris Han Lao. Uh, he is uh, Indian. And he is a co-chair of the ESDD steering committee uh, in Shanghai this year. So we have very good teamwork. And uh, then I think that is uh, give, give this example. We uh, that we need a multiple culture based. We need a cyber security. And to confirm, we have open access to scientific data and make this kind of data and the rich resources benefit to the scientific research and society. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Liu Zhuang. Yeah. He has led a very interesting group uh, to engage and promote, enhance the data, the science, scientific data exchange on the internet. It is very useful and beneficial for all. Now uh, we have a uh, on my list, uh, we have two, the Indian speaker, uh, Mr. Laminda. But uh, I, unfortunately, I didn't see him. So maybe we skip this uh, program. Then we ask the last speaker, Professor Tao Xiaofeng from uh, University, Beijing University of the Post and uh, Telecommunications. Professor Tao Xiaofeng is a very famous expert on wireless communication technology. He is, uh, he is now is uh, one of the leader of the of for development of the uh, fourth generation wireless technology in China. He has invented a lot of uh, new technology. Now he has uh, uh, 20 patents in the four generation wireless technology areas. So I want to invite Professor Tao to start his presentation. You have the floor, Mr. Tao. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? I'm Tao from Beijing University of Post and Telecommunication, also a member of CCIT CAST. Uh, these days, uh, some somebody uh, discuss about access, but today I want to uh, focus on emergency access, and I have some suggestions about emergency access. First, please look at the content, the importance of internet access, and uh, challenges for internet access in an emergency. I give two cases. The first one is to guarantee the quick and facilitate access. Second, guarantee the trusty and secure access. And then, finally, some su suggestions for uh, emergency access followed. This slide shows us how important of internet. You can see so many entities, operators. Microphone, okay of operators, government, companies, companies, individuals, and also these are some services, for example, uh, send and receive emails, transfer files, browse news, retrieve information, e-government, e-business, something like this. Uh, every time when I want to make a reservation for hotel, I always ask whether I can access internet in the hotel. Without the uh, hotel, it's not convenient for us, especially for technical professor. We can't, if we can't access internet. Moreover, in an emergency, access internet will become more important, uh, but more difficult. Then how to guarantee the accessibility in emergency would be great challenge to us. Uh, challenge to us. Uh, there are so many kinds of 
natural disaster in China, for example, hurricanes, floods, earthquake, storms. In the year 2006, the stronger earthquake in Taiwan Street. After the uh, earthquake, Telemainland internet user cannot access offices website. Millions of individual, 100,000 of in, in enterprises and the government local air network can, cannot update foreign interference software lab, library. And to a bank and e-commerce website, underseas communication cables and fibers, description result slowly internet access services and some financial transaction blocked it. Uh, this slide uh, shows us a miserable earthquake scenario. Uh, in Wuntuan earthquake, uh, May, 20, uh, May 12th this year, tens of thousands of uh, people lost their life. Uh, in, after the Wuntuan earthquake, people outside have low any message from some countries, even several days later, communication include internet, uh, internet access destroyed. Uh, just now, the chairman introduced me. I'm a, a researcher on fourth generation mobile communication. Below our GSM phone is the second generation mobile communication. We established the first generation mobile communication network two years ago, but I felt deeply sorry when I saw some pictures. The pictures show soldiers, 15 soldiers with communication equipment jump off the plane, the airplane, to the ground of this kind of countries. Uh, counties. So uh, in this area, just low communication, include internet, uh, internet communication in these areas. There are also the second very important phenomenon I want to point out. Some expert told me, on one hand, command center can't find internet access equipment when earthquake occurs. On the other hand, people don't know, people with equipment don't know where should be located the website, uh, the, the equipment. The second uh, challenge for uh, internet are uh, trusty and secure access. Network security, uh, there are so many, also so many speakers talk about security, and um, Professor Chin, I think, is an expert of security. Uh, network security includes such as hackers, virus, phishing, and community crimes are increasing. In the emerging situation, rumors can cause serious social problems. Even in danger, safer society results in several consequences. After one try as quick, lots of rumors emerged. Some websites were Jagged. The juggling message spread widely through the internet. Within just 20 hours, the website has been clicked hundreds of thousands of times, which decreased the victim confidence. So I think we should be opposite to the user of the internet to spread illegal or harmful information at any time, especially when we are in an engaged, uh, emergent situation. It's necessary to guarantee the trusty and secure access in an emergency. Uh, I think uh, maybe we should take some actions, uh, not just to talk, uh, some actions. I think um, the first step is to determine whether we should have norm or principles on emergency internet uh, access, especially for technical aspect. Technical, just like I said, uh, I'm a technical professor, professor. Second, investigate internet equipment for emergency communication beforehand. This is very important, I think. Uh, the third is to reach an agreed agreement and guarantee the trusty and secure access in our emergency. This is all for my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Tao. Uh, the, in the emergency condition, the, uh, through the network to exchange information and uh, keep communication is very important. Particularly in the last May, when the earthquake the, uh, happened in Sichuan province, the, a lot of uh, recruit, uh, relief efforts is uh, uh, relied on the 
internet, a lot of uh, story, because we have time to tell you a lot of story, very emotional story. Uh, just uh, Professor Tao, uh, he already mentioned something. Now we, uh, all the speakers already present their, uh, their, 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 their contents. Now I want to open floor to, for, for audience. You can raise some uh, questions or make some comments and, uh, or suggestions. Because uh, our time is very limited, I want to very shortly to uh, make your comments and questions. Uh, now, please. Cyber security. My name is Ala Adin Al Radi. I'm Iraqi, but based in Jordan. I'm a consultant security engineer, and here as an ISOC ambassador. Also, I am an uh, advisory council member of PIR, Public Interest Registry. We work on the DNSSEC. I put uh, my voice uh, with the Professor uh, Wolfgang from Denmark on the necessity for establishing a dynamic uh, coalition. And my question also to Professor uh, Lady of UN Gate. Uh, can you extend your networks to include... The main regions in the world are represented. So uh, I will not take the lead in forming this uh, uh, dynamic coalition on the culture of cybersecurity, but my recommendation to the Chinese colleagues would be to be as open as possible. And I think this is a great opportunity and um, to use the IGF to build these new kinds of partnerships. We have labeled this in a NASA context the EC3. It starts with uh, communication and then leads to coordination and finally it comes to collaboration. And this is what, a, what a, um, uh, the dynamic coalition can do, can uh, lead to collaboration on concrete issues, just the issues you have mentioned, and then lead to finally to, to action. It's not the IGF which has the action, it's then the dynamic coalition which is responsible for the action. And so this is my recommendation to the Chinese colleagues to take the lead, to invite you and to start the communication. Thank you very much. Uh, regard, uh, this uh, Brazilian China landsat uh, data sharing program. Uh, in this program, all the uh, landsat data uh, and, uh, are freely used uh, in the Latin American and the Caribbean region, and also China. And the both countries agree to free use the, for the uh, South Africa area also. And another uh, cooperation is the uh, uh, training program I heard that, uh, in the Cuba Academy of Sciences and the Brangier National uh, Environment, uh, Environment Information, Reference Information Center uh, and uh, uh, Chile uh, National uh, Science and Technology uh, uh, Ministry. So we work, work together on the training program. And the one, uh, one potential uh, with uh, this proposal submitted to the bank, uh, Inter-American Development Bank already. So hopefully it can support us uh, for next year uh, for the network development. I'm very uh, open to all kinds of collaborations. Thank you. Welcome to join us. That will be my honor and pleasure. Great, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. And uh, if I can be of any help to promote your uh, mission, especially in the Arab region and the Middle East, that will be my pleasure. Sure, so definitely. We have a work with the UN Gate regional networks. UN Gate has seven network, regional networks, Asia Pacific, and then, uh, Caribbean, Niger, and then Latin American, African, uh, European, and, uh, 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 and the, uh, Not the Middle East. Yeah, so, yeah, so, not, so that's it. Not the Middle East. Not the Middle East. You don't have a regional network? Oh. I think they're one. They're one there. In the Albert, uh, Albert area, I think so they're, they're one. Okay. So we, we, we will work on that. But Thank that you. is uh, because this project does the beginning, uh, it's uh, just two years. Okay. But uh, it's on the planning. I saw Mr. Uh, Khan recently in Tunisia. Mm -hmm. I was a key presenter in ITU seminar. And I spoke with him in the, on the, under the same spirit. Good. We keep contact about that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, are there some uh, more questions? 
or comments? Ah, okay, please. I come from spam uh, uh, mail. I, I registered um, uh, some Chinese mailbox. Two years ago, my mailbox is crowded by, by rubbish mail. But now it, it is really clean. Um, I, I, w I want to ask by which kind of way you reduce the uh, rubbish mail rate from 20% to 5%. I really my mailbox is much better than two years ago. 他的问题就是他想问一下，so uh, publish the uh, self-discipline uh, regulation, and then other hand, and the, uh, no, uh, secondly, uh, we published some rules and the regulations to ask uh, our to ask our uh, internet companies to uh, follow this, and the third is uh, we. Organized, uh, uh, we organized the training to our internet user, and uh, we also uh, uh, we also uh, uh, cooperate with other international uh, corporation or the organizations to uh, handle anti to handle spam. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and. Uh, and uh, finally, we do a lot of things from technical to handle this problem. I think because the time, so <laughs> I don't want to, you keep it hungry for you. So I will end this uh, panel. And uh, I think uh, I agree with uh, Professor Wolfgang said this topic is very difficult to get some uh, concerns. Uh, not only internationally, but also maybe nationally. So we will, I think, a bit, uh, we will realize that this uh, uh, workshop, this talk, to set up some norm on the super culture, on the basis of the conscience, is a long journey. Maybe we will take a, a, a time to reach some uh, results. But I think it's useful and beneficial for discussing and uh, exchange opinions. So its platform will be uh, continued to 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 next uh, consequent uh, meeting uh, in framework of the IDF, I hope. And also, I uh, very appreciate the suggestion uh, uh, then by Professor Foskan to study how about the setup of some uh, dynamic coalition mechanism to more open uh, and uh, for all the stakeholders, all nations to involve this uh, uh, process. So I think uh, today's panel discussion is very successful. I want, this, uh, one, I want to express my thanks for all the audience present here. And also I want to ask audience join me to thank all the panelists present here to make excellent presentation. Thank you very much.